we're going to take a look at AMD's new secret hidden in their latest BIOS, I guess, uh, 1007B. And I'm also going to show you how you can get your hands on this latest BIOS, regardless of which motherboard you're using and how you can install it on your platform to get more performance benefits that this BIOS unlocks. If you know how to download and update your BIOS, you can skip this part and jump directly to the benchmark results. Find the BIOS updates for your particular motherboard. Just look up the model of your board. By searching it in Google, you should be greeted by a support page which lists your BIOS and driver downloads. In my case, I have the Gigabyte B650 Aros Elite AX. I am greeted by their support page when I search for the BIOS. In this case, we want to make sure we head to the BIOS section and there are two options. We have the F8A and the FAB. We want to download the F8A because it has the Agessa 1007B. The 7C has some new security features. However, those features may reduce the performance. So we're going to skip that for now until we're proven otherwise. For now, proceed downloading this BIOS. Save it somewhere you can find it, usually in the download folder, and go ahead extract the download once it's completed. If you have WinRAW, you'll be greeted by this lovely message. Feel free to purchase the license, support the developers. If not, go ahead and extract the folder. Once the folder is extracted, you can now move this file right here. This is the BIOS file. You have to move this into your USB stick. I have already put in a USB drive and make sure it is correctly formatted. If you haven't formatted this correctly to the FAT32, go ahead and do that, but make sure there's no saved files that are important to you, because once you format it, it will delete all the information it has. FAT32 is the format that can be read by the motherboard. And now you complete. You have downloaded BIOS, you have installed it on your drive, and now let's go to the BIOS. For ASUS users, go ahead and do the same process. Search for the motherboard brand and put BIOS in the end. You'll be greeted with the support page. In this case, ASUS has the drive utility BIOS firmware. Go ahead and download this, extract it. The main difference is you have to run the first file first. It will automatically rename your BIOS file so it is readable by your BIOS. Once that's complete, follow the same step, put the BIOS on the USB drive. Same thing for MSI, same thing for ASRock. What you want to do is get to the BIOS of your motherboard. You know what to do, smash that delete button until you boot into the BIOS. And while you're smashing the delete button, smash subscribe and like as well. Each motherboard manufacturer has a different BIOS layout and user interface, but they all pretty much look very similar. Once I'm in the BIOS, what I want to do, and if you're a tuner as well, save your current profile. And the reason why is because in case you want to revert to your old BIOS, you can always load that profile off your USB drive because when you flash your BIOS, any saved profiles will disappear. Now that you've backed up your BIOS profile, let's go ahead and install the BIOS. To install the BIOS on the Gigabyte brands, you will look for something called QFlash. In this case, it is in the bottom right hand corner. For other vendors, it would call something similar, but usually it has the name Flash in it. Now that I'm in the Flash menu, it's designed to be very straightforward. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and load the file from my USB drive and it's going to ask me if I want to go ahead. I of course accept and verify the file and you just simply need to wait. And it asks for reset and I'll go ahead and reset it. And while the BIOS is being updated, it's very important that you do not reset your computer. Make sure you are confident that the power will be up all the time because if this process doesn't get completed, it's very likely that your motherboard will become completely bricked, which means you cannot use your computer until you place the motherboard. Once we are greeted with the Windows Start screen, that means the BIOS update has been successful. This BIOS, for the first time, unlocks AMD's true potential and allows us to overclock our DDR5 to 8000 or in some cases doing above 8000 megahertz. This puts all AMD Ryzen 7000 series on par with the top 3900K when it comes to tuning the memory above 8000 megahertz. However, as you can see, compared Comparing 6400 megahertz to 8000 megahertz, we were able to achieve one nanosecond lower in ADA64. So let's take a look at the performance in Star Citizen. As you can see, there isn't really a massive performance delta between 6400 megahertz and 8000 megahertz for the 7800X 3D. The performance difference is even lower in Area 18 and in Orison because we are so bandwidth limited and when it comes to Infinity Fabric that we're not really getting any benefit from 
8000 megahertz. The Infinity Fabric is holding the 7000 series back. Instead, you should interpret these results and this bump in memory speeds as the expected results you can get from the next generation AMD Zen 5 processors that will come out next year. It is expected that Zen 5 will be 37% faster than 7000X3D. This information is taken from the latest leaks. But before you jump for any celebration, this 37% performance boost over the 7800X3D would only be achievable if the memory was also able to boost 37%. Like as I've shown you in the past, the CPU will always be powerful but would always be held back by the memory. Therefore, I believe that during the development of Zen 5, AMD's engineers had to find a way to boost the speeds and performance of the memory. And they probably discovered that putting the memory controller in gear 2, they were able to achieve higher frequencies, but also lower latencies due to the architectural benefits and node benefits of Zen 5. They also probably discovered that the performance benefits of their memory controller BIOS update was actually backwards compatible with the current Ryzen systems. That is the secret of this new BIOS. While it doesn't really bring a massive performance benefit for the current generation, with the next generation Zen 5's architecture improvements, it will bring massive performance benefits. This is just a preview of what kind of frequencies you need to run to get those performance benefits. So this is definitely a sneak peek of what to come. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you are on the AM5 platform, I highly recommend that if you're building a new system, invest in ADI memory sticks to ensure that you can get the best performance when it's time to upgrade. The ADI product links are in the description below and I'll see you in the next one.